Okay, this one is about a failure some service techs have uh, committed uh, when they're dealing with capacitors and compressors starting. Uh, let's say you come onto a unit, uh, it won't start, compressor's out on overload, you let it cool down, and you go to start it again, and it doesn't start. It, it goes locked rotor and nothing's happening. Okay, you think, well, it's an old unit, uh, probably needs a booster or something like that. 521, Super Boo, something like that. Maybe give it another couple of weeks to a couple of years of service if I put that on. Okay, that's all well and good, but consider have you checked the capacitor, the run capacitor on it? Because most of these compressors start with a run capacitor. It's a soft start uh, capacitor. Okay, if I put something like this, this is a 521, or I put a super boost on it, it's going to start. Do I want it to run with a bad capacitor? Now, you think, well, it starts it, yeah. Well, that run capacitor is also, you know, it's a start assist, but it's also a run capacitor. It increases the efficiency of the motor. What's going to happen if I put that super boost or that 521 on there with a dead run cap? So let's see what happens when I eliminate the capacitor after the unit has started. Now I've got my meter on the common terminal. And I'm going to start this thing as it would start normally. And we'll see what the amp draw is. Okay, once the uh, amperage has settled down, we're looking at about 9.878, whatever the heck. Okay, that's a normal amp draw for this machine. The capacitor is working fine. Now, what if the capacitor wasn't working fine? Okay, I've just disconnected the capacitor. You can actually hear the compressor change its pitch. And we're up to 14 amps. Okay, that's how that thing's going to run without an operating capacitor. So let's talk this over. So let's consider what just happened. I put a 521 or a Super Boost or whatever on this thing and it started and took off. Okay, it's running. You think fat, dumb and happy, everything's good. The problem is that compressor is now running inefficiently and it's probably going to overheat and shut down during uh, high temp operations. So, and it's going to take out the compressor eventually. It'll, uh, it won't survive that. If the run cap fails and there's no start circuit, then the compressor uh, will not start. It just over, you, you know, locked rotors and won't run. You come along there and say, well, I'll fix that. I'll put a super boost on it. And you get it going and it's running, but you really haven't fixed anything. In fact, you've set it up to fail for sure, especially if this is an older unit. It's not going to take that kind of abuse. If you run into a compressor that won't start, the first thing you do is check the run cap. Okay? If you found out and the run cap's okay and it still won't start, you can try a boost on it. And uh, like I've commonly said, an older unit uh, and it won't start, and you put a boost on it and it starts, it runs for two weeks or two years. You know, I, that's what I used to tell my customers all the time. You got two weeks or two years, or when I get out the door. 
uh, it might help. But remember, that run cap has to be in operation uh, for you to put a super boost on onto this thing. If you do anything else, you're just going to be back there and there will be another failure. I hope this is understandable, and that's it on this one.